Hello from BI Consulting Services. Thank you guys for spending your January 1st with me. I'm going to put up a video today and hopefully I get better. I know I've not been as consistent with getting my videos up every single month. I try to bring out actually more content every single month. Um, as long as you guys are engaging with me, give me ideas on things that we can do our videos on. Um, that's extremely helpful as we sort of um, provide you with substantive content every single month. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Today's video, um, you're going to notice a couple of things. One, I'm using a very similar, actually the exact same file structure that we used in one of our previous videos and actually one of our most popular videos on how you sort of connect data uh, to SharePoint. And actually that's what's driving today's um, video all together. So we had someone on our YouTube channel actually reach out and say, hey, I'm about to do a very similar task. It's Kevin Gray here. I want to be able to, the only sort of caveat is that I'll be updating this data source every single day. So do I have to rebuild this or will it just dynamically refresh or update? And that's the question I'm going to answer here today. The short answer is absolutely Power BI. You can actually dynamically, uh, re every time you refresh the report, any changes you make in your CSV or your Excel files will just dynamically update. And so that's what I'm going to dive into today is just how you do that, which is pretty straightforward. So we're going to spend most of our time in edit queries. I don't think we'll do the entire report building session today. Uh, I've already sort of got a generic report that I put together just to do this video with you guys. If you're interested in that, just reach out uh, to me in the information below after you subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, reach out to us, comment. Let us know what issues you're struggling with in Power BI or what questions you have, because again, that drives the content that we put out here every single month. We want it to be engaging. Uh, so anything that you're having issues with or questions on, reach out. Uh, we will definitely do a video on that. We've sort of catered a lot of our content recently to SharePoint. It's because it's a popular topic. We're going to start to branch out into integrating SharePoint and Power Apps and Flow all into this sort of Microsoft Power Platform suite. So we're going to start to have our content be expanded a bit. Uh, I have a really cool one I think I'm going to do on um, Power Apps and Power Flow and then integrating that into Power BI. That'll probably be in the months ahead, but that's just one sort of quick heads up. We're going to start to advance this content a bit more. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, we're not going to probably build out this report. If you want any details on the particular report, it's fairly straightforward. I can walk you through maybe a couple of uh, the visuals, but it's, it's really easy and straightforward. We're going to spend most of our time in edit queries. Uh, and I'm going to go through all these steps from scratch, but I want to first start with just some of the changes. So if you've watched any of our other YouTube videos, please note that even though I'm using the same file, there may be some slight variations to how I apply my steps and edit queries for this particular uh, process. So without further ado, I'm going to just quickly uh, clear the permissions on the channel that the, the SharePoint site that I'm using for this build. And then I'm going to just close really quick. And I'm going to go ahead and just go and get data. So in this case, I'm just going to connect to SharePoint folder. I need the actual URL, which is here. It's everything before that shared is what I usually pick up whenever I'm going to grab the URL. I don't need this, so I will delete that. I'll hit OK. This is kind of the step I wanted to take you through just quickly, um, just so it would show you sort of what I'm going to be doing. Um, Okay, so once you get signed in, it automatically goes through the rest of the stages, but I did want to sort of show you how you actually have to sign in initially to your Microsoft account so that you're verified. Once we go through that, it's going to take us here. So this is normally where we'll go ahead and we'll just hit that transform data button. And then in edit queries this is sort of where all the magic happens and I'm going to take you guys through how you build this. We're going to end up using this example, which is the exact same file, but for the sake of showing you how to go through the steps, we're going to do it here. So I'm going to remove all the other columns in this data set. Then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to add a custom column. I'm going to call this table transformation. 
And this is where you put in that nifty Excel workbook um, content. <clears throat> basically what it's telling you to do is pull out all the Excel data. It's basically transforming it into a table. So you'll see the table here. I'm going to remove the other column. We no longer need it. I'm going to expand that. I'm going to remove everything but the tables that are left. Well, actually, let's go a step back because um, I only want the financial data. So if we opened up the Excel file really quick, just to sort of show you what this data looks like. So you'll see that there's uh, years associated with it. So I only want the data that has the years in it. I don't want the one that says financials. Um, so we're going to just grab the ones that are actually associated with the Excel files in my data set. So if I go to another one, just to show you one more, again, it has sort of that year to it. So when I go over here, if there's anything that doesn't have a year, which is these financials tabs, I'm just going to simply exclude those. So I'm going to filter them down so that I can only see the data for those particular years. I'm going to remove every other column after that's done and then I'm going to expand this data set. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and do one more transformation. All right, there we go. So this is essentially this exact file. Every single step you're going to see here, except I did not do one more filter. So once you do this, one thing I noticed immediately was the 1% error. Uh, that's because there's three tables of data here. Uh, so you want to make sure that you filter out uh, the headers in all the other in all the other files. So every single file is going to have a segment, a country, and a product. Those are the header files. We want to filter those out. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to move that step up because I want to see once these ch types change, um, you should see this. So again, now you see no errors. And before, if you remember, before we filtered out those rows, we seen some weird sort of errors there. It's because, again, those headers are still present in the file and you want to filter those out. So every single Excel file will have the headers at the top. Make sure to filter those out of your data. You don't want to see a segment or country or product um, in your actual filters because that means they're headers and you didn't filter them out. Hopefully that makes sense. If you need any more clarity, just let me know. Okay, so I'm going to delete this now because we don't need it. Um, I've already built a report with this same exact data. Um, in the financials tab. Okay, so we will go ahead and delete this out. Now, um, here's sort of the next step. So I'm going to show you really quick. You'll see that there's a 2014, a 2013-2014 file, a 2015-2016, and a 2017-2018 file here. All the way through. So we'll close. Just so you guys know, we'll go ahead and just do a quick refresh on the entire report. It'll pull in all that data from every single one of the files. All right, so now we have every single year of data in here, um, 2014 through, uh, I believe it goes to the end of 2018. Perfect, right? This is what we want to see. So the user on YouTube said, hey, what if this changes every single day? Well, that's the beauty of this. Let's say every single day you have to go out here and simply, you know, maybe it dynamically overrides the files that are out there. Maybe you have, um, let me get out of these files. Maybe you have um, sort of the same exact name for every single file and it's just a simple override. I would imagine that's probably how you're doing it, but let's just say you wipe out every single file and then you only want to grab a 20, I'm going to grab just a 2009, 2010 file for the sake of this example. So again, it could be that you're overriding that file. Maybe you have a flow that just automatically saves an Excel file or a CSV into a specific location every single morning for you. And that's the file you want it to pick up. Power BI will do it. So I'm not going to make any transformations again to this. I'm just going to simply refresh this report. So let's pretend maybe you have it on an auto refresh on the gateway and you're using this every single day um, and it just dynamically hits, you know, dynamically refreshes based on whatever time you set up. So let's say you know that new CSV or Excel file is going to go out there at 10 o'clock in the morning. You have your refresh set for 11 o'clock. 
So once you hit that refresh button on your data, you're going to dynamically see this data just automatically convert to just show you again this 2009 to 2010 data. So the system dynamically refreshes and updates um, all based on what you put in edit queries. Now what I will say is that the system is pretty particular. So there are a couple of things I did here. I deleted every single row of data. I typically leave a name file in my data set. Um, but when you do that and you promote headers, the very first sample file name, so the 2016-2015 file in this example, because I need to refresh this, so it'll take us just to that 2010 file. Let me hit the refresh button really quick. All right, cool. And, yep, so typically I leave this. Typically I like to see the name, so I would this would get promoted in the header. So let's just, for example, show you really quick. So if I delete that step, uh, I deleted the wrong step, or no, I didn't. Here we go. Nope, I did not do it right. Oh, I filtered. Let's try this one more time. Hit OK. And here, so I'm going to add the name. So instead of excluding the name, um, I'm going to keep it in. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to say, OK, keep name in here also. Now when I expand it out, this comes along with it. And when I promote the headers, this name becomes that. And I typically just change it here, right? I just dynamically change that column to that. But let me show you what it does. So it automatically says, look for this financial sample 2009 to 2010 name and then change it to name. So the only problem with doing that is that every single time, if you're not using this exact name every single time, it's going to look for this name only and it'll cause it to error out. So I, I removed the steps where I keep a name. Um, I like to do it just so that I know which files are there. So if I'm, you know, if I'm dealing with multiple files, you know, four or five or six, it's nice for me to be able to have the name file here, the name here, and then I can see sort of that key details around it. So this one's 2009 to 10, then it would be 11 to 12, 12 to 13, and so forth and so on. So I kind of like having that. Uh, but the only caveat is, is that it messes it up, it messes up the system essentially. It, it gets confused. It'll only look for that name. Um, and so if you're using the logic where you want to just dynamically update your reports, you probably want to exclude everything and then just kind of trust the system to go through the steps the right way for you. So again, so now you notice I've deleted that. It's looking for that particular name of the column. It's not there anymore. Um, so it will error out. And that would happen every single time if you didn't sort of just alleviate or eliminate any of those extra steps. Um, same here. So if you, you know, this change type thing happens dynamically. And if you lose a column in your next upload, it will error out. I'm sure you guys know that. So it does have to stay in that same format. It's expecting all 16 columns that are in this file to come back into this file. And it's also expecting the same naming convention. Okay, I hope this was helpful. <clears throat> Hopefully this video made sense. Um, again, I want to make sure all my content is helpful and useful to you guys. So think about things that maybe you're struggling with or topics that you want me to discuss, and I am happy to do it. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I know you want to hit the subscribe button. So as you're watching this video, go ahead and do so. Uh, we want as many subscribers as we can, and we want people to find this content useful and helpful. So thank you to everyone who sort of chimed in so far on YouTube. Kevin Gray, I hope, hope this helps you. And if anyone else who's sort of digging into Power BI or digging into how to use SharePoint, integrate that with Power BI or another topic. Maybe you want to do an API call or maybe you want to, you know, use a certain visual inside Power BI. Just reach out and let us know and we'll, um, we'll definitely talk through that. I think we're going to do one on this. I think it's called like the Synoptic Panel. It's a pretty cool visual inside Power BI. So we'll spend some time this year, hopefully going through that also. And then maybe a few other things. So just start to think through what would be useful and helpful for you. Uh, we might dig into Google, Google Analytics or um, some other key topics. So think on it, subscribe, comment, 
reach out to us. We're here to help.